Please hold your questions. After all the speakers have spoken, we will take questions at that time. Our first speaker is to travel to Simba, the economic coordinator of the Black Power Blueprint. Can you put some volume in your speaker, bro? All right, Uhuru, can I be heard? All right, so Uhuru and welcome. Uhuru is a key Swahili word that means freedom, and our freedom is precisely why we're here today. My name is Tachara Masimba, and I'm the Economic Development Director of the Black Power Blueprint, headquartered right here in St. Louis, uh, right here at 4101 West Florissant. Uh, we are here today representing residents, leaders, supporters, and stakeholders of the Black Power Blueprint to denounce the underhanded actions of the LRA administration and Ward 21 Alderman John Collins Muhammad. Alderman Muhammad is attempting to block progress, uplifting the long neglected community by refusing to sign a letter of approval for the purchase and renovation of two LRA properties right here in the North St. Louis neighborhood uh, of O'Fallon and as part of the Black Power Blueprint program. The Black Power Blueprint has brought new life, pride, inspiration uh, to this once vibrant Northside black community, wiped out by long-standing anti-black policies of the city of St. Louis, geared to push us out and make North St. Louis and Ward 21 white. The huge red, black, and green flag flying from the beautiful, newly developed outdoor garden and event space across where we are right now, uh, which is situated right across the street from the Uhuru House at West Florissant and Alice, is known and loved throughout the community. Alderman Muhammad has not signed the letter of approval uh, that we are seeking because he is in unity with the city's agenda to gentrify North St. Louis for white people. Muhammad is in pocket in the pocket of the big the big banks, the investors, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency who are buying up this land for white development. He would like nothing more than to help gentrify North St. Louis so that he and his friends can benefit, benefit from rising property values. Alderman Muhammad has stated that the LRA director, Laura Costello, claims that the African People's Education and Defense Fund, APEDF, the parent organization of the Black Power Blueprint, has not improved our LRA properties. This is a demonstrable lie. For the past three years, the Uhuru Movement has worked in the heart of the most deprived communities, renovating properties and building economic programs that uplift and help raise the standard of living of our people. In fact, we've raised over $400,000 uh, towards the projects from supporters and from fundraisers. These are resources spent right here in North St. Louis. We've hired community contractors and workers and we've engaged hundreds of volunteers and one donation, one dollar at a time. All these projects are here to bring self-determination and self-reliance to a community bled dry and left to rot by politicians and developers for decades. The Black Power Blueprint has demolished two LRA buildings uh, on our four lots at 4031 West Florissant, right here where I stand right now. Uh, we've created a beautiful destination spot with a vegetable garden to my left and a beautiful event space uh, as demonstrated by the beautiful stage right behind me. Uh, we plan to launch a community farmers market in the space, in this space, in the spring of 2021, which would be happening right now if it were not for the COVID outbreak. We note that Alderman Muhammad's gardens down the street in both directions are nothing but a fenced-in bundle of weeds. Uh, we demolished the condemned building on the corner of College and West Florissant to make way for an outdoor community basketball court. This month, we are beginning the renovation of the apartments at 4358 College Avenue in Ward 3 as housing for the African Independence Workforce Program to train sisters and brothers coming from the colonial prison system. We have purchased the old boathouse at 3723 Goodfellow Boulevard in Ward 22, for which we are completing architectural plans to build a bakery, cafe, cultural venue, and commercial kitchen. So where is Alderman John Muhammad's economic plan for the black community? Where is his evidence of self-determination for the African community? We have seen nothing that he has done for the people. 
in place of genuine economic development and black commerce, he has given the police bloated salary increases in a community with no jobs. Alderman Muhammad claims that the Black Power Blueprint is, quote, hoarding properties. Another lie. Until recently, there were 25,000 vacant and abandoned properties in St. Louis, 12,000, or nearly half of which uh, were owned by the Land Reutilization Authority itself. Many of those properties have been sitting empty for 30 years or more. 12,000 LRA-owned properties have been a breeding ground for violent activity and an ever-decaying quality of life for the residents of this community. APEDF owns two LRA properties in Ward 21 and is requesting two more for renovation and development along the West Florissant Corridor. Alderman Muhammad never protested that the city of St. Louis gave white developer and gentrifier Paul McKee 64 LRA properties in the old North neighborhood not far from here. According to the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Paul McKee received $47 million in tax breaks from the city government, of which Alderman Muhammad is part, including $2.5 million in tax city tax credits for a building McKee didn't even pay for. Uh, John Muhammad is quoted by the St. Louis Post-Dispatch as saying this is what development looks like for disenfranchised communities. Speaking of Paul McKee, McKee increased his fortune by making millions on the sale of the 99 acres used for the NGA, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. This forced at least 100 families out of their homes to make way for the super secret spy agency responsible for perfecting drone strikes and bombings of children and families in the Middle East and throughout Africa. Alderman Muhammad has never stood up against Paul McKee and the developers and politicians. He has never fought the let it rot policy practiced by wealthy developers, a throwback to the Team 4 plan, the notorious St. Louis economic embargo placed on the black community, an embargo that continues to starve us and push us out to this day, ensuring the economy of North St. Louis continues to experience more lost commerce, more abandoned and decaying buildings, more violence, more hopelessness, more police violence, and eventually gentrification at the hands of white developers. Alderman John Muhammad pushed the phony $1 house program to lure in voters in his ward. Only four of these $1 LRA properties have sold to African workers because no one can afford the $70,000 and up, $70,000 and up that it takes to fix them up within the 12 to 18 month time limit. Generally, only white people can quote unquote make good on properties purchased from the LRA. The Black Power Blueprint is the people's movement. The only movement fighting for the nearly 12,000 properties hoarded by the LRA over the last 30 years to be controlled by land for the black community, for the black working class community, and that uh, the solution to our problems is political and economic power in our own hands. Alderman Muhammad does not fight for the people. He fights against the people. He fights for his own interests. He is in bed with the white developers, the NGA, the corrupt politicians that fill their pockets with resources that are earmarked for impoverished communities like ours. Yet, we never see a dime of this money. The Black Power Blueprint fights for black workers doing it for ourselves, for our own benefit, beholding to no one, beholding to no one but the needs and interests of our own community. Alderman Muhammad says that we are outsiders. Uh, we are no more outsiders than John Muhammad, who is a member of the Nation of Islam based in Chicago. Muhammad does not accuse the N N NAACP, NAACP of being outsiders, even though they are based in Baltimore, or the Urban League based in New York, or the NGA spy agency, that recently stole a thousand acres from families here in North St. Louis, which Muhammad supports, which has its military base in Springfield, Virginia, 840 miles away. I grew up here in St. Louis. Columba Yee and Danette, who will speak after me, grew up here in St. Louis. The Black Power Blueprint is part of a worldwide organization led by the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru Movement for the Liberation and unification of Africa and African people everywhere. 
We chose to be a part of this organization because everywhere it is located, it fights for black workers and builds black-owned economic institutions so that the black community can have power over our own lives. In the name of this black working class community, we demand that Autumn and John Muhammad sign the letter of approval and get out of the way of black progress. Call LRA board, uh, board chair Mark Levison at 314-657-3721. That is 314-657-3721 and demand the LRA also get out of the way of black progress and release the properties to the black community in the form of the Black Power Blueprint. We say black political and economic power cannot be stopped. We are winning the Black Power Blueprint and Black Power to the African Community, Uhuru. Thank you. Thank you, Kishara. Next we'll hear from Kalambai Andinat, the president of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Uhuru. 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 My name is Columbae Antoinette, as it was said. And Columbae means brave, never give up. And I am the International People Democratic Uhuru Movement, international president. We are an international organization that's all over the world. And I'm from St. Louis, born and raised. Uh, I lived all over St. Louis. I can't really claim any hood because we lived, we moved every time the lease was up. So I'm from St. Louis, born and raised. And I was never into political life until August 9th when Mike Brown was slayed in the street of Canfield. As I left my job working in Ferguson, walking home to my house that was in Ferguson, my life changed. And I met Chairman Amali Yeshitela at a march. And it was the politics of understanding that we, this is colonialism, capitalism, that really helped me to understand that this was the movement that I had to be a part of. Because I really wanted real change. And I was willing to do whatever it took to be a part of real change. But I wasn't going to join anything. And so I joined this movement six years ago. And six year, and in this organization, all over the world, I have seen the institutions that we have built. And I have seen the impact that he, we have made all over the globe. And so the Black Power Blueprint coming to St. Louis was exciting. At one point in my journey in life, I left St. Louis because of the disparities, because I wanted to get, a, I wanted to escape, you know, you know, the violence and everything that I seen that happened in St. Louis. But this movement right here under, helped me to understand that no matter where I ran to, I seen the same violence, the same conditions that black people are under. And so the Black Power Blueprint is doing beautiful, beautiful work. We standing in evidence. It's not what we say. It's literally what we have done. We have built, we have brought nothing but black contractors into a process of building um, the Hoover House. They have came afterwards and donated to this project, believing in what we have, what we do. We have community rallies here for the community where we talk about issues. See, this is a new day. And this is strange to a lot of people because a lot of times the African working class have not been organized. But the African People's Socialist Party is here. The Black Power Blueprint is here. EPDOM is here to be a voice to the African working class. See, they've been getting away with these things for decades, for years, and we all know it. It's true. But no, we're calling them out by name. John Muhammad, you can't hide. You cannot stand in front of black development. You could not, in one hand, say, I'm for the people, and then on the other hand, go against the people. We have, re we have brought people into a process of having confidence in their community. When people drive past there, even if they don't live in the 21st Ward, they feel, they walk past there and they look at it and they say, wow, this is beautiful. We did this. We came together and did this. People have donated to this project all over the world. So why would you want to stop this? How could you not unite with this? Ask yourself that question. The LRA, they've been doing this corruption for a while. 
They have been literally lording these homes, stealing these homes by all kind of ways. When elderly people die and their family can't pay the taxes in very little time, they take their homes. This whole process need to be in the hands of the African working class and not something cute with saying the dollar houses that nobody actually benefit from or actually could participate in, but a real process where African people can be brought in and actually secure these homes. So we say release these LAR properties to the black power blueprint that is developing this ward, that is developing, you know, across not just the 21st ward, but everywhere we are. But specifically today, we are outraged at these claims that we haven't made good on our property. Show us one. Point it out. Show us where we have it. Point it out. Because we are pointing out facts. We're showing you facts of what we did. And we're pointing out facts of what you didn't do. So yes, I stand 10 toes deep in support of the Black Power Blueprint. And I unite with this claim. I unite with this project. And we will continue to call out anyone that stand in the way of the people being able to have self-determination because this is what it's all about. We have, we have to have freedom in our lifetime. And the Black Power Blueprint is a way that the people can be brought into a process to develop our own communities, to bring our own things that we need in our own, in our own space, grocery stores, etc. So unite with us, call the LRA, reach out to John, and ask John, what's going on, bruh? Get on the right side of the history. Get on the right side of the question. And, ask, and let the LRA know that you are outraged at you stopping this process, but continue to give Paul McKee more properties to continue to just white people communities out. Ohuru. I just wanted to uh, note really quickly that if you listen, uh, you can hear a motor in the background. And that motor is uh, a piece of uh, demolition equipment that is demolishing uh, one of our two build, you know, one of two buildings that they will be demolishing throughout this week. So this is happening right now as we speak. Not only are we standing in space that we've developed uh, former LRA properties that we purchased and developed uh, not only are we right across the street from another property uh, that we purchased and developed from a private owner, but right now as we speak, demolition is happening on two of our additional uh, LRA properties. So uh, this is a blatant lie, uh, and this is what John Muhammad told us that Lord Costello said from the LRA. Uh, this is an attack on the people, and we will not go for it. Thank you, T'Challa. Uh, thank you, President Kalambayi. Next we'll hear from Penny Hess the chair of the African People's Solidarity Committee. Thank you, Abdullah. My name is Penny Hess, and I am here to express my total unity with the statement read by Tacharo Masimba, Economic Development Director of the African People's Education and Defense Fund. I am here because I have profound support and admiration for the Black Power Blueprint. I am the chair of the African People's Solidarity Committee, the organization of white people under the leadership of the Uhuru Movement. The African People's Solidarity Committee coordinates the international movement for white people, for reparations to African people. I salute Chairman Omalia Shatella, leader and founder of the Uhura Movement all around the world, and Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella, who is the architect and coordinator of this beautiful project and under whose leadership it is a profound honor to be able to serve. I join the demand that the LRA approve the sale of two properties in this ward to continue the magnificent progress of the Black Power Blueprint and that Alderman John Collins Mohammed must sign the letter of approval. I live south of the Del Mar Divide, which is the blatant and raw reminder 
that this city is built on the enslavement of African people and represents two completely different realities, economic and political, one at the expense of the other. St. Louis City has done everything possible to maintain the poverty and hopelessness of this black community for the benefit of white people. From the Team 4 plan to the continuation of the let it rot, as have been said, and violent police containment policies, the city's strategy is based on starving an oppressed community and pushing them out. So it is being given by the Black Power Blueprint that engages and uplifts the community through self-determination. The city of St. Louis and white people here owe reparations to this African community for everything that has been stolen from it and the violence carried out against it in our name by the politicians, corporations, and developers. I speak for many other white people in this city when I state my unconditional solidarity with the Black Power Blueprint and the movement for political and economic power in the hands of the black working class. Reparations now, Uhuru. Next we'll hear from Jordan Fry, a designer in our community and a supporter of the Black Power Blueprint. Thank you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, everyone. Hello and good morning. As he said, I'm Jordan Fly. I'm a designer, also a pet groomer. I'm a member of Impedum, International People Democratic Uhuru Movement. For three years, I have been a volunteer supporting the Black Power Blueprint. I have assisted with the reconstruction of the Uhuru House, as well as the One Nation, One Market, that which we're standing in this morning. My time of development with the BPB, Black Power Blueprint, has been nothing but hands-on socialization to my people and footwork, because nothing is clearer than interaction and visualization to understand what our mission is. In the last past weeks, I have been pushing the facts of this organization and how the improvements are striving to uplift this community. It has troubled me that Alderman John Muhammad has not fully supported the focus of something that is so positive in building and empowering the African community. My pledge is that I unite and stand very proud to say that I am a part of this organization that is accomplished and will continue to accomplish improvements as well as building economic development throughout North City, North St. Louis City, Uhuru. 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 Thank you, Jordan Fly. Next we'll hear from Makeda, a, a community supporter, commu a supporter of Black Power Blueprint. Uhuru. Um, as was stated, my name is Makeda, and um, I came in to contact with the Black Power Blueprint um, years before it started, actually. I came in as um, a member of NPEDA, and as the Black Power Blueprint was uh, developed after a couple of years by um, our leadership, D.C. owner, Zanea Shatella, um, I got a chance to work with her uh, coming into the, uh, uh, into the Uhuru House and uh, refurbishing Aquaba Hall from a condition that I couldn't, I couldn't see how. I couldn't imagine how we were going to go from what it was to what it is today. Um, this beacon of hope and effort and, you know, love put back into the community and envisioned by our own self-determination. You know, I went into that building with D.C. Ona and cleaned it up from, you know, squatters having been in the building. And we put a lot of effort. The call was constantly made to have community supporters come out 
and actually take part and the community did. The community came out, black contractors came out and we've had since then, you know, since acquiring the property that is um, the Ahur House, we've acquired other properties that we've been working on constantly, consistently, because this is a movement where you, you know, you put your work in, your work is, you know, the evidence of your love for the community. You don't get to just say, I'm a park and, you know, go home. Um, so I am, I stand firmly, firmly in unity with the Black Power Blueprint and their push to continue to, to you know, um, push economic development to the black community and progress, progress. And I, I hope that with everything, um, we can get more people involved and contact John Muhammad and get him to sign the letter that will release these properties from the LRA, that will get the LRA to release the properties to the Black Power Blueprint and actually give us the um, ability to continue the momentum of developing black power and economic development to black people in the black community. Uh -huh. Makeda, uh, if you have any questions, the media, the press, we will now take them. Thank you. I'll shoot. Right now. All right. All right. So look, uh, you guys are saying that John Muhammad is holding up progress. How many conversations have you guys had with uh, Alderman Muhammad in regards to this um, prior to the conference? Uh, too many for, well, the question is how many uh, conversations that we had with Alderman Muhammad prior to having this press conference, uh, too many for me to name. Uh, when we first got here, he was one of the first people we called. And we have pictures of him uh, with us in this Uhuru house before it was renovated. Uh, we've uh, laid out brochures to him uh, even before this had manifest, even before we realized uh, to what extent we would develop this project, we laid out to him everything that we had, all of our literature, all of our intentions. Uh, we showed him uh, large uh, boards of our construction plans and whatnot. So we've had discussion after discussion after uh, discussion with him. So he's very clear about what the Black Power Blueprint is, or at least as clear as he wants to be. Um, and we had a, a recent discussion with him when he told us that uh, he cannot write the letter unless he knows that the uh, LRA will support it. And uh, he does not want to soil his good name. Uh, he does not want to soil his relationship with the white developers. Uh, and he does not want to contend with the LRA on behalf of the people because it may mess up his relationship with the status quo. Okay, so as far as the, uh, the conversations you had, you said prior to the development of the Uhuru House? And since. And since. All right, so uh, how long has the uh, Uhuru House been here um, developed in its entirety? Um, I don't have the, we, it's been about three years since we first started on this project. So conversations started roughly about three years ago. That's correct. You had conversations recently. That's correct. All right. And as far as the letter, um, just for our viewers right now, yes. could you go ahead and define what letter you need uh, signed so that you guys can proceed? Yeah, it is a letter uh, of support for the Black Power Blueprint and for uh, specifically uh, approving or uniting with the purchase of two properties, 3905 West Florissant and 3915 West Florissant. So those are the, uh, we need a letter of support for that. And all we're saying is get out of the way of black progress. We'll do the rest. Uh, in your own words, why do you feel that you guys do not have the letter needed to move forward? Well, I think we've laid it out. Um, he has difficulty unifying with the interests of the black community uh, as against his own personal interests and, and the interests of the white developers. We did have support from yeah, and uh, Columbia and Annette, uh, another leader in our movement, has reminded me that uh, we do have a letter of support from another older person from a, for a third property that's part of these uh, this package of pr three properties that we're attempting to get. Okay, um, as far as the properties that you already have, uh, just for clarification, because we're live right now, our viewers yeah, yeah. Uh, they might be tuning in at any second and yeah, uh, want to get caught up. How many uh, um, properties have you guys already got a hold of? and made some type of transformation too. We renovated this 9,000 square foot uh, building right across the street from me. I think you can see it in the background. It is a banquet hall 
and a community space. It is beautiful on the inside. We uh, have offices on the second and third floor for community members. And then this spot here uh, at one time was four different parcels. We've transformed these and, and on the four parcels were two vacant buildings uh, that have been vacant, uh, we think for a decade or more, possibly two decades and were in such bad condition that they could not be renovated. So we had to demolish those. And uh, in place of it, you see a beautiful outdoor space for outdoor venues. You see a 50 foot uh, flagpole with the red, black and green flag. That is a beacon, as we said earlier, an absolute beacon of hope and inspiration to this community. You got a brother uh, right here behind me who said that uh, he grew up with one flag and then he wished he had the red, black, and green flag here when he was growing up because he would have dropped that flag for this flag. And this is what we've seen from this community. Uh, we've uh, acquired two other buildings that we are demolishing, as I said, as we speak. Uh, there was another property that we uh, demolished, which will be an outdoor basketball court. Um, and we had to demolish that because the bricks started to fall off the building and became a hazard. These buildings have been sitting for that long, rotting for that long. And then we have a fourplex that we uh, will begin renovating uh, in the next week or so, which will be housing for people getting Africans getting home from prison. Um, and then we also uh, have begun architectural plans for a community kitchen and bakery cafe. Have you guys had any uh, support uh, from any of the elected officials? Uh, when I say elected officials, I know that's broad, but I mean any of the aldermen, any of the state representatives or anyone? Yeah, we've had several alder persons uh, come visit the pro uh, project and show unity with the project. Um, Alder Woman Sharon Tyus. Um, we've had um, uh, Alderman, I wanted to say for last, uh, Jesse Todd, Alderman of the 18th Ward. Um, Alder uh, Woman Shamim Clark Hubbard of the 26th Ward uh, come support the project. And Jesse Todd uh, just spoke about a week ago uh, at our demolition, the uh, uh, coming out of our demolishing of the two buildings down the street and he has been a staunch supporter He went to a hearing with us uh, last year to support uh, the, per the, uh, the the For us to be able to move forward with the progress here. So we've received support from other uh, Older persons and as I stated a minute ago from uh, the third war alderman John uh, I'm sorry third war alderman uh, Bosley uh, in terms of the uh, support letter I think that's all the questions yeah. I have. Okay. Okay, so I'm being told that we're gonna uh, walk down the street and we're gonna go to look at the two buildings that we are demolishing now. All right, all right, all right. For everybody tuning in right now, this is Real STL News. You guys just watched a press conference from uh, the Uhuru organization um they pretty much laid out everything that they needed to say however right now it looks like we're going to be uh taking a hike down to a uh property this is a property that you guys uh, acquired right yeah all right so they're saying this is two um properties that they they've already acquired so we're going to go ahead and take a hike and uh see what they're doing in the community All right, so for everybody tuning in, we are in North City. We're on West Flores and the Alice. Uh, we're moving toward West Flores and the Warning at the current time. Let me give you uh, the visuals of what the North City residents see on a day-to-day -day -day basis. If they are traveling on West Flores. And now we're traveling east at the current time toward Grand, uh, toward the Water Tower. How many blocks are we going up? Uh, just not even a whole block. Okay. And All right, cool. right here, we just passed the house of Mr. Gary Brooks, uh, who has lived in this community for 40 years. We named the garden after him. Uh, he sits on the steering committee of uh, the Black Power Blueprint uh, right here. And this other building right on the other side is Sam McGowan, who owns a business in the community center here. He sits on the steering committee of the Black Power Blueprint. So this is a community project. Okay. Uh, so one building all right, um, so tell us about, uh, looks like you're about to do that. Tell us about the building. Uh, let's go over here. Okay. 
All right, I'll let you uh, stand this way so they can see the uh, see the property and back. Yeah. And uh, just tell us what this was before, how long it's been here, Ooh. how how long you guys uh, how long has it been since you guys acquired it, and of course plans for this space. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how long it's been here uh, been here or been empty and dilapidated, but all of these properties have been here so long that they are no longer uh, buildings that can be saved. So if we could save them, we could. So I mean, you can only guess how long they've been here um so you see the bricks they've already demolished the buildings it was two buildings here um this will be outdoor i mean i'm sorry this will be a uh, retail space for uh health products uh retailers um and we want to bring uh, community vitality we want to bring business we want to bring retail space and we want to bring a healthy economy back to the black community so you guys are actually uh, demolishing these spaces and actually trying to invest back into the actual community. And uh, you say you got you guys have had support from other aldermen? Yes. Yeah, we've had support. Uh, as I said, uh, all the persons, Sharon Tyus, Shamim Clark Hubbard. Um, I believe uh, Navarro, Heather Navarro. Um, Bosley signed the letter as well. So... Um, you know, we are, we don't understand what the problem is with John Muhammad and the LRA. I mean, it's ever, it's demonstrable. Paul McKee got 64 properties. 64 properties. Yeah. Did it, I hear you mention that uh, Paul McKee has uh, got one of those or a few of those properties at no charge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's gotten, you know, from what, from what I understand, he's gotten, he's gotten a property for no charge. Then he gets $25 million in tax breaks. Paul McKee, uh, he has a uh, bread, right? Money. He's a millionaire. And John Muhammad is quoted as uh, saying of uh, one of the tax breaks, $8 million tax breaks that uh, Paul McKee wanted, uh, Muhammad is quoted as saying, this is what uh, community development looks like for a disenfranchised community. And we don't understand uh, how he could see uh, a developer, or, you know, a, and I say white because they rest on the black, the backs of the black working class community. So this rich, you know, this wealthy, developer who actually wrote tax he wrote his own he got a lawyer to craft a special piece of legislation so that he can have his own designer tax break uh that will allow him to get free property and, or to get property without paying any taxes and john muhammad supports this paul mckee sat on these properties for years he did nothing to the properties he didn't even cut the grass on the properties he uh his his policy was a let it rot policy where you let the uh, properties go into a slum condition so, so that you encourage the community to move out so that you can have more space for more developers to come in. Do you guys think uh, that you guys can have a, you know, do, do a sit down with John Muhammad? I mean, you know, he's not here to defend himself, of course, yeah. uh, but I, I don't know. I can't speak for a person, yeah. but do you think that maybe this is some type of misunderstanding that he didn't get the letter signed? Uh, do you think I, you guys can resolve this issue so that you guys can uh, push forward? I think we can resolve the issue. I think if it was a misunderstanding, then the understanding comes with uh, signing the letter. So. You know, our objective is to not, not to be friends with John Muhammad. It's a political question. Uh, this is the black community expressing itself in the form of the Black Power Blueprint. So if you support this project and there was a misunderstanding, then clear the misunderstanding up by signing the letter. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you. We appreciate you so much. All right, so look, we're still uh, on West Florissant right now. We're close to West Florissant. Warning, we're going to go ahead and see uh, what else is going on at this conference. We fail and trade amongst ourselves. We need this right now in this period that we live in. We see 600 years of this social system on our backs. So we appreciate everything that the Black Power Blueprint has done on the North side and what we are going to continue to do because we need revolutionary solutions for revolutionary times. Yeah. And the times that we live in right now is that we are dying. We are dying by all means. We are dying by the police. We are dying from horizontal violence. We are dying from not having grocery stores. We are dying. So we cannot be punkish. We have to be throwing our fists up. And we have to be able to call out anybody that look like us or anybody that don't look like us that is not standing on the right side of the question. Yeah. That's what period we living in because our kids deserve a future. Yeah. So I appreciate the Black Power Blueprint yeah. and I appreciate you yeah. for getting out your bed and saying that no more 
that I'm going to continue and murmur and complain at home, but I'm going to stand for change. I'm going to fight for change, and I'm going to be a part of change. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right, let's give it up for uh, Colum let's give it up for and Annette, president of the international president of the International People's Democratic Guru Movement. So uh, we just want to close out. Uh, can somebody? We just want to close out by again uh, reminding everybody that uh, right now, as we speak, um, I don't know if we can get the uh, Caterpillar equipment here in the picture. We are demolishing buildings, and this was not staged. Uh, this was something uh, in the works for months. So right now as we speak, uh, the building, two buildings are being demolished behind us. This is evidence of the work of the Black Power Blueprint. I also want to point out that uh, this building, or at least on the other side of this building, uh, is a community center uh, run uh, by Sam McGowan, who is uh, a member of the steering committee of the Black Power Blueprint. Uh, right on, my, on the other side of me is a church uh, who has agreed, you know, who has expressed deep unity with the work that we're doing. They have allowed us to utilize the uh, empty lots here for parking. And then the other building is the home of Mr. Gary Brooks, uh, who is a 40 year or more resident right here in uh, North St. Louis, and who also sits on the steering committee of the Black Power Blueprint, um, and after whom we named the garden, the uh, Gary Brooks Black Power Community Garden. We have other members of the steering committee, Black Power Blueprint Steering Committee, uh, here with me. Um, and, you know, Jabria Taylor, I'm about to get your last name wrong, and Helen Hunt, um, Sister Candace, but Helen Hunt lives in this community, has been living in this community for how long? About 30 years. Uh, I grew up and was raised here, Columbia Yee. So we reject uh, this nonsense about the Black Power Blueprint being outsiders. It is an attack on, on the black community itself to suggest that they're not intelligent, this community is not intelligent enough to be able to identify its own leadership. So we just wanna thank everybody for coming out. We wanna encourage people to take action. Call John Muhammad at 314-622-3287. Tell them to get out of the way of black power, of black progress sign the letters and get out of the way of black progress 314-622-3287 and again my name is Tachara Masimba economic development of the black power blueprint all right all right so with that being said this uh the, like that concludes the uhuru press conference they started at alice and west florison at one of the Uhuru properties that they've acquired and made the transformation to. It was a dilapidated building. However, uh, within the last two, two and a half years, it was uh, demolished and it, it's, been, it's been turned into an event space. Um, you know what? All right. Can you do me a favor? Can you walk us down there and show us the two properties, the uh, Huru House and the uh, yeah. the event space? Yes, I was about to cut the live stream, but um, I want the people to see it. Okay. All right, so uh, we're still live from the press conference. Okay. Uh, go ahead after the truck go by. Let's post up, okay. uh, you know what? Let's post up right here. Okay, so um, this is the one African- Hold on, hold on, one second, one second. All right, let's post up right here, right here. All right, cool. All right, let them know what this is. Okay, so this, this here right here is the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace. And um, this is the garden right here. And the garden is beautiful. And uh, Mr. Gary Brooks that live right next door to it, he do like all the work. He, he you know, um, organized young people and all kind of people to be able to come here and plant. And so the kids got to get in the dirt and actually know how to plant and how important it is for us to have this skill. Because a lot of times in our community, um, we don't have grocery stores and access to like really good foods. Foods that's actually going to um, make a difference in our life. You know, um, like heart disease and 
blood pressure and all those things are not black diseases that's colonialism and when we are you know living in food deserts then we only have liquor stores that sell junk food that's what we have access to right so one of the things we wanted to address is how we feed ourselves and how to become one with the earth and know how to grow foods and stuff so that was important mr gary brooks is dope um to do the work that he do um part of the um, black power blueprint and he's right here in this community and we named we actually named the gordon after mr gary brooks so okay. the one africa one nation marketplace is a venue where we have concerts because of the coronavirus it slowed um, our production down this is actually a way that we sell and trade amongst ourselves where we bring vending and the whole idea that we must be able to control our dollar but that not just buying black but buying black power understanding that our money needs to leave out of our circulate and leave out of our um, community too fast. Let that truck go by. Hope that everybody's okay where they going. Um, and also, you know, like, so the whole question of how we control our dollar and bring in black commerce is the thing that we addressing with the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace and also having outdoor concerts, you know what I'm saying? Like where people can come and jazz out and hip hop out and everything right here at the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace. And, you know, the community can rent this space out and have weddings and things at an affordable price because that was very important as well. So this is economic development to the black community. And I think like um, my brother here, you know, that's, you know, they live on the block that, you know, grew up over here. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I can't tell his story like he could tell his story, but I really appreciated soldiers like this. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, when he seen me, he said he found me because my house, I got the red, black and green on my house, too. So he said she must be connected to the people that put that red, black and green flag. And we've been talking and rapping and, you know, working hard to have like a peace treaty. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, cease fire, save your bullets for the real war. You know what I'm saying? Um, and working with the soldiers on the, on, the, on the streets. You know what I'm saying? And so this is some of the work that we've been involved in. You know what I'm saying? Like really talking about it. At one point he said, I couldn't even come over here. Like this was a, this was a, you know, a line that we couldn't cross because of college and uh, fofo bud you know and the beef between and we saying cease that because we we have we have war not with each other but we have war with a real with a real enemy so political education you know putting out the burning spirit and etc things like that is critical so that flag right there is very very important you know what i'm saying um to our community when they see it they understand what we mean like marcus garvey said africa for those at home and those abroad um so that's the one africa one nation marketplace All right, for those of you tuning in to Real STL News, uh, you guys are listening to the voice of Kim. My current location is going to be West Florida, Center, the intersection of Alice, where we're here with the Uhuru movement. They just completed a press conference in regards to trying to continue uh, development in the area. Uh, they feel that they are being uh, roadblocked. Kitty. They feel that they're being roadblocked. But prior to uh, shutting the live stream down, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys uh, some of the work that they have done in the community uh, thus far. All right, so the Uhuru House. Come on this side, y'all. Yeah. Get in the uh, frame. All right, so uh, this is the Uhuru House. Could you uh, let the people who might be tuning in or might been seeing uh, that name or that phrase for the first time, could you uh, define Uhuru? Uhuru. Uhuru is a Swahili word that means freedom. We um, feel that we should be constantly engaged with the idea of freedom. You know, um, freedom should stay on the lips of African people um, as... You know, some people say that Harriet Tubman said, and some people say she didn't. But whoever said it, it's just so on point. I freed a thousand slaves, and I could have freed a thousand more if they only knew that they are not free. And so even though they have freed us off of the plantation, in so many ways, we see evidence that we are not free as a people. And we should be constantly engaged with the struggle to be truly liberated, where we have power in our hands, that we don't have to beg a court system that kill our kids for justice. That we don't have to plead with a school system to teach our kids the truth that's bent on oppressing them and teaching them lies to keep them colonized. That we don't have to beg or plead with a state for LRA property so we can develop our own communities to put grocery stores in our own hands. That's what freedom is. And until we got that, we don't have it. So I say no surrender, no compromise. All right. um, I wanted to just show you this space. All right, so it looks like we're going to be going in the inside of one of their um, one of their projects, which is the Uhuru House. I 
just got new keys, so. All right, she's having Here, a muscle. Guys, might need some key developers. <laughs> no, um, I think anybody that know anything about getting a fresh new key, <laughs> that mug don't work when you first it's get open. it. Yeah. All right, so we'll pull it out. All right, so uh, so we're gonna we're gonna see this space. No, the if you pull, I'm, I'm just wanted you to put this out because it, it's this needs to be. Now put it in. Oh, that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I can get it out. All right, so let me guys, let me bring you guys up to speed. Uh, okay, there we go. We're in. It's a, it's a key thing. All right. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to run upstairs and get the alarm because I didn't think about that. All right, so look, she's got she got to go get the alarm. Uh, in the meantime, uh, somebody, anybody, Westbrook. Who we got? Uh huh. Oh, she uh, she threw me off. I'm supposed to be security, strictly security today. Oh, that's all good. So you can tell us about the security alarm going off that she's going to get, right? Oh uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, gotta have security down here. Not necessarily for the people, but you know, uh, the movement of the '60s and '70s. You know, they uh snuck the uh, ops in. You know, that bug I man. This a facility that you're not gonna bug. But uh, appreciate that you're coming out. But this facility that y'all in is on 4101 uh, West Florissant. Mm -hmm. And she's just showing you the uh, the beautiful space that uh, can be rented. And, 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 and uh, here she come now, too. All right, all right. He done, he done great. He, uh -huh. he stalled for you. Yes. All right, so so what we got? So this is the Quava Hall. This is where we have um, a rental. We don't have weddings, anniversaries. We actually even had... When my auntie passed, we, had, we actually had her, um, what's that called, y'all? Repass. Repass here as well. So this is a venue. We also open it up every Sunday to the community. We when you say open it up to the community, uh, what can they come do here? So what they come and do here is we have all kind of things. We, have, uh, we had uh, trauma yoga at one time. We have exercise class for the elderly. Um, we have um, Sunday rallies where we feed the community, where you could get a free meal and also um, come in and be able to talk about things that's happening in the community. We don't have people come in with struggles against the city because they was ticketing them about their grass. So we were able to help this um, man be able to keep his property. We actually raised the money for the taxes for him to be able to pay that off and put pressure on the city to cut their own grass while you're giving him tickets about his grass. And so things like that where people don't have to feel alone no more because a lot of times we feel alone like how do i take this on how do i take this school battle on we don't have um, communal forums about the schools um, in our community as well so we also last summer which is dear to me because i'm a mother is free child care mothers shouldn't have to like make up lies about getting care for their kids you should be able to go to the club too you know what i'm saying you should be able to enjoy yourself too and that's important for your mental health for your kids so we wanted a way for parents not to be penalized and be able to have free childcare where the kids are engaged in understanding economic development, the red, black, and green, who they are, and be able to meet doctors and scientists. We take them to meet, you know, doctors that are black, you know, um, doctors that, scientists that look like us, so they can see that you can be literally whatever you want to be in a liberated Africa. So we had a lot of different venues. We had a fashion show. We don't have poetry events concerts um you know for local artists and things like that so we don't have a lot of different things here and we want to have many many more things um um here as well all right so uh before we close out uh prior to you guys creating this event space or this uh this uh community space what was it prior it was a bar so what we told we um it, it used to be a bar way back in the day was it you functional know? it wasn't so like literally when we first started having meetings here it was no floor when we came and looked at this, I was like, okay, maybe in five years we're going you know, we to get this together. Because my mind, I never did anything like this. I'm from Walnut Park, you know what I'm saying? So like, I'm thinking, okay, we're going to work on this for five years, and then eventually we're going to make this. And you know, um, being a part of this amazing um, organization, we was like, no, nah, we international. We're going to lay out a POA, which is a plan of action. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get the world involved. You know what I'm saying, and built, um, reconstructed and building because them soldiers that stood up on August 9th deserve real change and not some ha some center that they put where the 7-Eleven, the Quick Trip used to be. You know what I'm saying? But we wanted we this is for you. 
You know what I'm saying? This is for you. You know what I'm saying? To say that we understood that you stood up and you fought against police. And the crime was down at that time. And so, like, all that, like, I'm just ecstatic that I was able to be, you know, part of painting the wall, you know, winning young people in, painting the wall, and then them coming back in here saying, whoa, wow, like, and saying, I remember I painted that, I painted that on there, or I put that clock up, or, you know what I'm saying, I put them curtains there. How long it took, though? It took, like, one year. We did it all in one year. One year. Yeah, it was hard work, because... We didn't want to just do it. We wanted the community to be involved. So part of the work that we did was not only just re, you know, reinventing, you know, doing something to the people, but we brought the people in, you know what I'm saying, and winning them into the process of coming in and painting something. That's work. You know, that's knocking on doors and, you know, giving political education and making them feel safe with you and and everything, but it was well worth it. Okay, so look, we about to shut down in about 4 minutes. We're going to be uh, been going for an hour. Yeah. But before we shut down, um you guys mentioned something in regards to uh, space for people coming out of yeah. uh, the prison system. Yeah. Uh, could you speak on that? Yeah. So we um, got a four family flat right now and that's why we want more property so we can fix those spots up so we can have our own affordable housing. And so what we have right now, this is going to be for our brothers and sisters to get a home from prison. When our brothers and sisters go home in prison, it impacts the whole family. And one of come back into a society that won't give you nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so a place for them to live is critical um, um, to their development. And then to do it for black power giving you this, you know what I'm saying, and political education, and you know, seeing us, um, even what brought you to prison, like all that, I mean, this is mind blowing um, that this can happen under the leadership of black people that's unapologetic about it. You know what I'm saying? And then the, the um, the work center where they'll be able to get a job and a skill, you know what I'm saying, to start their own business, you know what I'm saying, et cetera, you know, building a real economy right now, you know what I'm saying, that's what we engaged in. So the Black Power Blueprint is magical and it's real and you could be a part of it. All right, so look, I was going to ask you, for people who want to support, people who want to connect with you, uh, people who just want to um, read over or browse sure. over uh, the Black Power Blueprint, uh, how do they do that? They go to blackpowerblueprint.org. We got a spell it out. Spell it out. Black Power Blueprint. That okay? Yeah. Dot org. Okay, that works. So yeah, we've got beautiful pictures that show you the transformation uh, from day one until now. And then they can reach us at 314-380-8016, extension two. Okay. And the last thing uh, from both of you, do you guys think that you guys can uh, have that conversation with Muhammad? Uh, patch this whole thing up and move forward as a uh, as a collective, I guess, or at least as a community. Yeah, I'll go first if you're okay, let you close it out. But, um, yeah, the thing is, uh, to patch it up is to sign the letter. Uh, we This is a political question, and we are saying John must unite with the black community. That's a political question. It's not a personal question. So it's not a matter of us becoming friends with each other. We don't have to like each other. Just get out of the way of black progress and sign the letter. Yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate that. You know, I unite because we have, I have sat in meetings with John and John say, I support the Black Power Blueprint with words, but then in action, don't. And you can't say something and don't do something. Your words is all we got. I mean, for me, as a black person, that's all I have is my word. So if I give you my word that I'm going to do something, I want to hold to it because I, I, most of the time I'm broke. But the only thing that's real good for me, anybody that know me, anybody that know me, across the board, is my word. And that's why I joined the Uhuru movement. Because they word, when they say it, they do it. That's just who we are. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're saying to John. You know what I'm saying? I remember I made a political error. You know, and I had the woman up and say, I was wrong. I did, that wasn't right. I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't post that. And I, I put something out on my personal Facebook page apologizing for the error that I made. So everybody know that I know that it was an error that was made. So John needs to apologize to, the Af to black people and he should sign this letter. You know what I'm saying? And that's real big. That's what we put you in office for. You know what I'm saying? When we went to the ballots and we voted, we voted because we, want, we didn't want the same old thing. That's why these people are in office now. 
is people want to hold, we, we, we tired of the same old thing. We tired of people selling us out. We tired of people pocketing in their pockets and, not, and they can't even pass that stuff on to another generation. So John, sign the letter, do the right thing. All right, with that being said, we have been going for approximately one hour now, one yes. hour now. All right, so we get, we heard, we saw the press conference. We saw uh, some of the work. We're standing in the Uhuru house at the moment. We just heard the sentiments uh, from the Uhuru organization. This is real STL news, signing out for the community because we are the community.